bland, boring, awful, garbage, and trash are just a handful of the adjectives I've seen thrown around to describe season three of Diablo 4. That's right. Season of the Construct appears to be a complete bust from pretty much every angle. In fact, everywhere you look, it seems as if people are leaving the game in droves. The entire fan base seems to be completely disappointed. Just looking at the Diablo 4 subreddit, we see such threads as, how is the season unredeemable already? Completed the season quest and stopped playing. The vaults are awful. The hope I felt for D4 after season two changes have been completely crushed. And it goes on and on and on. Now, I know Reddit could be overly negative. However, it's not just the Reddit forum that has this vibe. From the official Diablo 4 forums to Joe Shelby's Twitter, it appears everyone hates this season. Across the board, it appears the player base is simply running low on patience for Blizzard to figure out how to fix their game. Even the Twitch viewership has dropped dramatically. And this is not a drop after the first week. There was a massive drop in viewership within 24 hours of a seasonal launch. By the way, does anyone else think the Twitch support a streamer mount looks very basic? For comparison, the starting human mount in World of Warcraft looks like this. Imagine making a horse that looks like a low level beginner mount from any other game and expecting people to actually pay for it. At best, this should have been a Twitch drop. No matter which way you cut it, it just appears as if Diablo 4 is simply a dying game with a vastly disappointed fan base. Now, before anyone says it, yes, I know. I know, we do not actually know how healthy the game's population is, nor do we know the true player retention rate for it. However, every single third party metric we have shows a steep, steep downward slope. Now, what's sad? And you may think I'm crazy for this, but I think that this season had the potential to add some interesting content and a ton of quality of life features to the game. However, once again, almost everything they put out feels uninspired, generic, and terrible. First, let's start with the new enemies, the robot bugs. Yep, in a Diablo game, we're expected to fight robot wasps, scorpions, and spiders. These enemies feel like they belong in Mega Man. Imagine if, just imagine if, the robots they added to the game had more of a demonic look. Instead of a steampunk look, we had a demon punk look. Just think of games like Doom and all the cool looking half demon, half cyborg looking monsters you face. I'm talking about things like the cyborg demon. And the spider robot. These are some of the most memorable boss fights in the Doom franchise. However, instead of getting badass, weird cyborg monsters, we got generic, boring, bland trash. Now let's talk about the pet. Now, before I get into this, I'm not gonna talk about the lack of damage it does or the fact that it can barely keep pace with your character. While I do agree with those points and I think they're major points, I'm sure you've heard them over and over again. I wanna focus on something else and how the team once again dropped the ball when it came to adding quality of life features to this game. For starters, in Diablo 3, your pet can pick up gold. For some reason in Diablo 4, they dropped this mechanic. More so, how awesome would it have been if they copied a system for our pet like we see in the Torchlight series. How incredible would it have been if our pet had his own inventory system and we could send the pet back to town to sell the items in the inventory or dismantle them, thus speeding up the pace of the game and adding a ton of quality of life to it. In fact, Torchlight is not the only game to do this. Van Helsing is another prime example of an ARPG that handles the companion extremely well. So how is it that the ARPG with the most resources, with dedicated development teams for the season, made a companion in-game 
that is the most brain dead and featureless companion I've ever seen in any ARPG. Lastly, let's talk about the traps. However, before I dive into this, I want to bring up a couple key points. When the game first launched, some of the major complaints surrounding it was about the mounts and how they would constantly get stuck on barricades or the environment. The fan base was extremely unhappy because every time the horse got stuck, it felt like the overall pace of the game was slowed down too much. Then there was the dungeons and players were upset about these as well because every dungeon had an objective in it and it turned the dungeon into a slog and once again, just slow down the pace of the game. Blizzard spent the next several months updating and addressing these issues. And by season two, they've corrected most of them. And it was considered a major win from the fan base. So why after spending all that time fixing things that slow down the pace of the game, would you make a season that once again, drastically slows the player down. But you know what? Let's look past the awful theme and actually take a look at the traps themselves. Once again, these just feel generic and basic. We're getting the bare minimum amount of effort and thought put into this. Spinning pillars, darts, spiked floors. If you're going to run with a terrible idea, at least have some originality to it. At this point, I don't know if the devs lack imagination or if the overhead is so drastic that it's crushing the creative freedom of the development team. But I would love to hear what you all think. Are you guys enjoying this season of The Construct? Have you already quit the game? And if you have, let me know what ARPG you're currently playing down in the comments below. And if you made it this far and did enjoy the video, let me know by dropping a like. And if you are new, please consider subscribing. As for me, I got a ton of work to do, so I'm going to get back to the grind. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.